brought down a small doe this morning and I'm um, gonna go ahead and get it field dressed, drag it back towards the house, hang it up and get it skinned out and I'll show you the process of how I do it. Lots of different ways to skin a cat and I guess skin a deer, but I'm gonna show you the way that I do it. Um, and then we'll have some, some meat to go in the freezer. Um, so it's a nice cold morning, which is good. So we don't have to rush too much to get her, get her gutted out. But I'm gonna go ahead and field dress her just to get the guts out of her and get the, the meat to start to cool down a little bit. Trying to be careful not to cut into the guts for several reasons. One, if you cut into here, it smells like death. Um, but then we also don't want to get any of that on the meat and spoil it. Get it all nasty. Just trying to be extra careful on protecting the tip of my knife with my finger like that so I don't accidentally poke anything. You know, like gut hook knives, the ones that have the little hook with the sharp edge on the top. Those are pretty handy to have, but I have a hard time carrying like specific purpose tools into the woods. I like something that I can use for lots of different tasks and a knife like this, I can get a deer done. I mean, a gut hook is nice cause you can just, and you're done, you rip it through and it's, and it's finished and you don't have to worry about, well, you don't have to be as careful about poking the guts, but I mean, what's it take? An extra 30 seconds with a knife like this as opposed to the gut hook. So not that big a deal. Um, so I just start my incisions always like right here at the sternum, the base of the sternum. Uh, on a human, this is called the xiphoid process. I'm not sure if it's the same on a deer, but anyway, I start my cuts right there because there's no danger of cutting into the guts. So I start all my cuts right there at that xiphoid process and then just work my way down. Um, and I use the hill to my advantage. I'll turn her, turn her so everything just kind of falls out down the hill and let the, let the blood drain out that way as well. So I'm just reaching up inside and I'm gonna cut the esophagus. And that will allow everything to come out. Some people split the rib cage open to do this, but for field dressing, I don't usually do that. I'm a little bit rusty. It's only like once a year or so that I do this, so it's hard to remember all, all the steps sometimes. There we go. And now, all of this goodness should come out. So I didn't make the best shot in the world. It's a little bit too far back, but I didn't hit the guts or anything, which is good. Um, I hit lungs and liver, pretty much. So not a bad, not a bad shot, but not perfect. There you go. Then we'll let the guts out, let the rest of the blood come out. And she'll start cooling off real fast now. Keep the uh, heart, what's left of the liver, kidneys, things like that, dog food. I'm not really big into organ meat. Some people like it, but I don't. Um, but Maggie will love it. All right, let's get her, get me cleaned up and we'll get back to uh back to camp here so i should have hit her should have hit her right about here that would have been a better more ideal location so i shot a little bit too far back which 
I'm not super proud of, but you know, it is what it is. And she only ran maybe 20, 30 yards probably at most. So, and, and done, no issues at all. I have mixed emotions about hunting. Um, I don't like killing stuff. I don't enjoy that process at all. And even like before I took this shot, you know, it was in my head of like, ah, oh, man, I, I don't really want to kill that animal, you know, cause it's a living, breathing creature running through the woods, right? And I think there's something wrong with you if you don't feel that at least a little bit. But at the same time, I eat meat. Um, and in order for things to live that consume meat, they need to kill other things. And that's just the way nature works, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, hunting is just kind of part of me. I've hunted my whole life. Um, my ancestors have hunted land around here since, uh, since they came across on the boat. And I think that that's just a tradition, a way of life that needs to be kept alive. <laughs> so I'm trying to always cut from the inside out because if you cut uh, from the outside in you're gonna put a lot of hair on the meat and it's really really tough to get off So if you can help it cut from the inside out And then all I'm gonna really do now once I get most of this neck done I'm just gonna grab on and rip it off. You don't have to even use much of a knife. You can just kind of Pull the hide off with some with some muscle power And you can get almost almost all the way off. Sometimes you got to cut a little bit of connective tissue here and there but for the most part, you don't even need to use your knife. Hey. Maggie, quit. <laughs> she thinks you're getting her deer. Oh, no, yeah, it's all yours, Maggie. Yeah. Maggie, you quit.
This is my favorite part of the deer is the inside loins. When you look inside, you can see them. It's not, they're not real big, but um, it's by far the most tender and best part in my opinion. So. Five seconds or so and it'll be all right guys thanks for watching make sure you hit that thumbs up this is pretty much our deer um, all boned out and ready to roll roasts and tenderloins and steaks and all that stuff ready to go and this is the stuff that i'm going to be putting in the um in the grinder and making um ground ground venison with so again thanks for watching thumbs up see ya